Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is episode two. This is going to be a full start to finish project that I'm going to be filming for you. Um, this is at the top of my stairs, as you can see, still haven't finished all the work up here. Um, that is um, my bedroom. I'm going to be showing you in a minute what the wardrobes I did. And I changed that door line in and door, and then I never finished it off. And I still got uh, these ones to do as well. I've done that one, but I haven't put the skirt architrave around it. I just put some temporary one and just make it look better. But again, never got around to finishing it. But this is going to be my job um, for this video. This is our storage cupboard that we keep towels and um, our stuff for our bathroom in. But it drops down and that is actually a false part of the wall. So I'm going to take that out completely and I'm going to um, take it up and build a full cabinet in this space. Um, so I'm going to be ripping all this out and then it's going to be uh, three drawers and then a door on top and it's going to be adjustable shelves for towels and other sort of things. Um, but I'm going to treat this video as I would do as a, in a customer's home. So I would come to a job, see this opening, I would take some measurements and I would go away, um, draw up a 2D drawing of it with a price for the customer. I mean, if the customer agrees, then um, I would take, come here, do the demo work. So I'll take out that, take out the lining, and then I take some more um, better measurements. And then I can go away and start building the cabinets. So that's what I'm going to be doing and do a step by step of how I would do it if I was doing it in a customer's house. So stay tuned. So before I rip out that cabinet, I just want to show you my bedroom. So I done this about four years ago now. Um, I was hoping this was going to be the flagship to my business and a lot of people was going to go for this style because this is actually my style of wardrobe. Um, but not many people went for it, to be honest. Um, the integrated handle really took over and the shaker style. I still do quite a lot of shaker style, but not quite like this, and especially in this design of you've got the two wardrobes both sides, you've got the drawers in the middle, a bridging unit, and then a TV. And I like the fact that I got the oak top on it as well because I wanted something a bit, a bit different. Uh, the reason why we went for the four panel shaker is to match our doors. These are the doors we're going to have throughout all the house done downstairs and still got a two to do upstairs. But I wanted to match them with the wardrobes. I thought that would be a nice feature. And and then I also built the bedside cabinets. I've done two bedside cabinets. They are actually the first bedside cabinets I've ever done. And I haven't done many after, to be honest. Uh, but again, I've done the oak work top, which is quite nice. And this was an opening already there. It was an alcove space because we got a double chimney in our house. So last side is a chimney um, in this room. And then in the next room, the chimney is the other side. So it's a double way chimney. Um, so I built a wardrobe in there as well in that space and matched the doors up, um, which that is actually my wardrobe. And the rest is my wife's, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was um, really enjoyed doing this job. Um, this is all, again, all MDF. This is actually standard MDF. This is not even the moisture-resistant MDF. Uh, I don't know why I did use standard um, at the time, to be honest. Um, but, yes, yeah, it's standard. I, what I did with this is I actually painted all of the boards two coats of primer before I started to cut them up and make them up. So I was cutting, so I was painting full sheets out on my drive, two coats of the Zinza 123. And... And then I started building it up and I built it all in this room because this was an all empty room. Uh, another feature we had about these wardrobes is the lighting. Is I put some lights, some spotlights, and they work off a remote. I buy these off Amazon um, and it's just a, a remote socket that you can buy. Because a lot of my wardrobes, especially if you follow me on Instagram, has got lighting in the top and bottom. Um, like, you know, like plane flights and I do quite a lot of this and I always use a, a remote and non electrician so my electrics are quite basic but it's quite effective and like I said this is four years old now and it's still going strong so I hope you like these ones and uh, next I gotta rip out that um, doorway and the bulkhead above and then I can go down to the workshop and start building and there it is all ripped out the, the bulkhead was a bit tricky because the timber three by three posts was coming all the way through here 
uh, but then it was no noggins in between so i just cut that out and i'm going to refit a bit of three by three post in there it's not a supporting wall so but it's just to tie it all back in and then this side i'm going to run a three by two cls all the way down to the floor and then the carcass will go against that because i'm having a 60 mil fill up this side as well as the side as well but it's all ripped out and like i said um I'm going to try and treat this as a job, as I would for any customer. So the first initial thing was me to come out, uh, take some rough measurements. Then I would do a drawing and give a customer a price. And then this is the kind of drawing that I would give to a customer. This is on the iPad. I would give a, a printed copy mind on A4 paper. So it would be my, my business name. It would be a diagram of what it's going to look like. And then... The customer's name and like a colour is going to be MDF, but I'm actually going to paint, uh, paint the front of this one, uh, the doors and drawers and the style as well. It's a shaker, and obviously it's going to be three drawers and the door. Um, it's got the rough measurements I would take for pricing, but then if a customer agreed the price, I would come back, rip it all out, and then I would do um, a more detailed drawing. And this is what this looks like. Um, like I said, it's good measurement has already changed from 660 to 600. And then that is the what the carcass is going to look like. The bottom carcass is nothing really because it's going to be drawers inside it. But it would be overall of the, the cabinet and and the draw, drawers. It's still a drawer size and drawers. Um, the skirt, the fillers, a top filler and, and side fillers. Um, what back I'm going to put on it. And then it'll be a materials list. So it'll be the legs, the hinges, the shelf pins, the draw runners, um, and even what iron mongery is going to go on it. So this is what I would take to the workshop and I would work off this drawing. And then after a day in the workshop making this, I would come back and start fitting it. So um, it's down to the workshop now to, to start making everything. So I'm here down in the workshop now and uh, just started to um, measure everything up. I've got all my dimensions on my whiteboard. Please don't make fun of the writing. Um, and uh, this is all coming from this drawing I was showing you yesterday. So there's the drawing that I would, I normally have this on a piece of paper, on an A4 paper that, that uh, I print out, but it's just on my iPad at the moment. So all the measurements go on there and how many I need so I could just start ripping it up. So the process is, is I would get my full sheets of MDF. I'd rip them. Um, through the length on the panel saw, the vertical panel saw, and I'd bring them to the bench, cut them to the, to the height, and then I'd run them then through the table saw to final dimensions. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is that's not set up perfect yet, so I need to find adjust that one before I will, can um, get that perfect, so I'm just still be using the table saw. Um, and the main purpose for that saw anyway is just to rip up all the big machine uh, or a big material so i'm gonna probably still do this process anyway it just makes things a little bit easier um so i'm just marking out all my pieces now to cut them to to the height and then i can run them through the table saw So just cut all the sides and the top and bottoms and it's now the backs to cut. Normally I would use 12 mil MDF as the back and I would just screw the back on um, onto the actual carcass. Uh, but I'm gonna do a bit different. Uh, I had this tip off Alistair Johnson from Freebird Interiors. So if um, you don't follow him, uh, go and follow him because he was one of the inspirations of me starting a YouTube channel because uh, I found his video so helpful for me as a business. So go and check him out if you don't already follow him, but hopefully you do. So here's all the sides and the top and bottoms. 
and like I said, the process is is I rip them down on the vertical panel saw to get um, a rough width, and then I will bring them to the bench, cut them with a the track saw, and uh, to get the height and the width of the actual unit, and then I can cut then the depth of the carcass on the table saw, and I can just run them all through at the same time. Uh, now I'm going to be cutting so the back. This backs. is the basic layout of the carcass. I'm going to build in. This is the top one. So this is one that's going to have all the shelves in it. And as you can see, it's just a box. So really, really simple. Um, like I said, I've got an 18 mil back. I would normally use a 12 mil back, but I am going to 12 mil. And because I can't get materials at the moment, um, that's the reason I'm using 18. And the reason why I'm using uh, standard MDF is because I can't get materials. Normally, I would have used um, MFC, so a pre-finished board for the inside and just painted the outside but I, i'm gonna pre-finish stuff at the moment and i want to start offering this to my customers so what at the moment my service is i offer bare mdf and then a the customer paints yourself or i recommend a painter or i do everything pre-finished in the mfc in about 30 odd colors but what i want to try and do is for um a, like an in-between um price is by offering the inside to be all bare MDF that you don't paint and then the doors and the fillers and the skirt and the top filler will be painted in a colour, um, normally be white. I would try and offer just a few different colours just to make it easier for me. So I would paint the doors and the drawer fronts and the everything you see outside but then when you open it, it will be bare MDF. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to try and see how it holds up over time as well. I know a few people do it this way and it's very successful. So I just want to, again, test it out to my house to see how it goes. Uh, there's a do, few different methods of fixing this. Normally, I would just pocket screw the sides, um, the top and bottom into the sides. And then I would screw the 12 mil back um, through, through the back into the edge of the carcass. Um, but I am going to try a little bit something different here. I'm still going to pocket screw the top and bottom into the sides, but I'm also going to pocket screw the sides and tops into the into the back, and that's the way Alistair does it. And it seems to be very good because what you can do is you can get all the front all nice and flush and get it all lined up and then just screw back down into the back panel. And because the back panel is the overall size of the carcass, then you just cut your carcass uh, back panel to, to that. Um, but also, I have been trying um, the Conformat screws. So these, so these are fantastic for chipboard and MDF, is where you drill into the side all the way through, and then you can use these, and these ones go like a, a hex or a head on them. And they're fantastic because they really strongly act as a dowel. Um, and you can take them out. So if you had a big cabinet you wanted to pre-assemble in the workshop, and then you could take it apart, either spray it or just do it easy for transport, take, put it in the van, and then just reassemble it at the customer's house. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this top one in the Craig, all the Craig screws, the pocket screw method, and then the smaller unit, I will pocket screw the backs, the sides and tops into the backs, and then use the Conformat screws to fix the sides into the top and bottom. So f try a few different methods just to see, because not everyone has got a pocket pocket machine um the pocket jigs are really cheap i think get about 40 pounds they're not very expensive but this conformat screw is another option and you can buy these from screw fix so they um quite easy to get hold of the harder thing to get hold of is the actual bit because it is a special bit it's a, a beast of a bit uh and it does take a bit longer to go through because it's just so much material to to take out and this is a trend one and i think i paid about 20 quid for this one um, but what is easier, and a friend of mine um, told me about that, is to drill a 4mm hole first through to take out a lot of the waste and then use the Conformat um, step drill bit to go through the rest and it does take out a lot of material so it speeds up the process a little bit. So before I start uh, assembling these units and cutting the pocket holes, um, I'm just going to round over all the faces um, with... Uh, three millimeter round over bit uh so it's this bit so i take off all the edges um i'm sand to 120 and then i will apply the mdf sealer on all the edges even though it's not going to be painted it is better to put the mdf sealer and sand it just because it gives a bit more of a smoother finish 
So I'm gonna be doing that next and then I can start doing the pocket holes. There you have it, all the parts sealed, all sanded, and now it's ready to start doing some pocket holes. So I've got the Craig Foreman all set up, so I'm just gonna start pocket holing everything. So I've just cut 39 pocket holes in 2 minutes and 37 seconds, which is pretty quick in my eyes. Um, it's definitely the fastest way to join the cabinet together. Uh, I said, I don't normally do it that way from these little side pieces going into the back, but I'm going to try it out to see how it goes. And then the smaller unit, I'm going to use the Confirmat screws and just screw the back panel on like I would normally. So just have two different units. Two different methods just to show you guys there are other options out there and obviously you could use a domino you could use a biscuit biscuit cutter you could even pin it and glue it together but i'm to just trying to show you my two methods of doing it so now i'm going to put all the, the screws in the position and i can line it all up clamp it and screw it all together i buy the craig screws they're the 32 millimeter ones a coarse thread so they're great for mdf and i buy them 1200 at a time uh, like I said used to buy smaller ones by just going through them so quick and as you can see I haven't got many left I go through quite a lot of them So this is the small unit that I'm going to be using the Confirmat screws to screw it all together. Uh, before I actually put it together, I get my marking gauge set in the 9mm, which is half the thickness of the 18mm material. I just mark all the way down there, because this is going to be the placement of where the screws are going. And it's got to be quite precise for it to all line up, to so just spend a little bit more time um, marking out before actually screwing it together both sides this is the back of it the sides of it so you're not going to see it and then i will come in 35 millimeters on the ends so mark all them up Hope everyone's liking Radio 2 today. We've got some great tunes on it. So the only problem about being down here is I can't get great um, radio perception. So it's Radio 2 or Radio 1, and I'd rather Radio 2 to Radio 1. So that's the ends marked, and I would just half that then and uh, mark it. So 
I've got a four mil drill bit now. Um, a Brad point bit is better, but I'm going on at the moment. So I'm just using the, this bit that I got and drill a more bang on the market. Try to keep it as straight as possible. That's the good thing about using biscuits or dominoes is just for alignment. So instead of struggling like I am at the moment, you could just put them in. It takes a bit longer, but maybe I will tr show you that in the next, on my next one I do. So I do use a pocket hole um, with biscuits, cut that a lot. I want to get some better clamps as well. I hate these sash clamps. They're cheap and cheerful, but uh, they're not great, they're a bit awkward. I want to get some of the Irwin quick claps. You can get 900mm ones, so I'd probably get a few of them. I'm just gonna tighten that up, it's just not gonna go anywhere. Take that clamp off. Like I said, and we'll go back in peace on the floor, on your bench, you've got something nice, to, nice and flat to work off and you can also square it up because the back panel is square. I'm just using the 4mm drill bit now to drill all the way through it. And now I'm using the trend bit that's meant for the compromat screws. So using a 4mm drill bit takes out a lot of materials, it's a lot quicker. Fifty mil compromat screw. And that really pulls in tight. I'm glad I worked out on camera anyway. So I'm gonna do the bottom one now and finish this side off completely. Do one at a time, don't want to get too cocky. It really pulling well, them screws. back screwed on to the bottom unit so again just use the Craig marking gauge set it to 9 mil draw the line all the way around the edges and then just use a countersink bit uh, this one's got a stop in as well so you don't go too deep um, just drill all around and then I've used 30 mil screws just to put the back on uh, this doesn't really need a back on it because this is a draw unit so you're never going to see the back but it just stiffens it up and it squares it up as well because like I said I cut the back panel to the overall um, dimensions so that's nice and square. So I'm just finishing off the bottom unit. I put the, the legs on for the bottom unit. Um, I haven't got the right size legs but these are just these are 90 mil installed and 90 mil height uh, but I want it to be um, 120 so they do just about reach. Um, I know we got bigger ones but I'm going to in stock at the moment. So my next step now is to drill the holes in the top unit for the adjustable shelves. Um, I use the Craig shelf pin jig for this. Um, I buy them individually but you can clamp them all together um, to make one long one so you don't have to move it as often. So I'm going to do the front first. Um, have this piece 
that um, butts up against the front edge and I'm referencing off the bottom and then you, you can it's up to you how many holes you want to drill they set at 32 mil centers but I skip one out so um, so there's not so many holes in the, in the unit So when you drill the holes and you run out and you need to move it up, you've got this locating pin put in the last hole you drilled and then you can just carry on drilling. And that's the front done and now to do the back, you just take off them pieces that back up against the edge and then you just back up against the back panel and carry on drilling. That's the unit built. I've just clapped it to the bottom unit for the time being to make sure it's secure. And I tried all the shelves, adjustable shelves, and they all fit. And like I said, it's, uh, I like using adjustable shelves because there's a lot of flexibility. So you can just take a shelf out if you want a bigger space, or if you just want to move a shelf up or down, you've got shelf pins and you can move up and down. So I prefer to do this kind of method instead of fixed shelves because it gives the customer a lot more options. So next step now would be to make the drawers. So that's what I'm gonna do next, make the drawers and the fronts. And then I just got the side fillers to do and the top fillers. Mm -hmm. 